Hello students, welcome to MEC 1321 Engineering Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're going to go over Chapter 9, which is titled Center of Gravity and Centroid. Um, the objectives that we have for this chapter are to discuss the concept of center of gravity, center of mass, and centroid, and to show how to determine the location of the center of gravity and centroid for a system of particles and a body of arbitrary shape. Uh, within this chapter, we're going to go over a couple of uh, two of the sections. We're going to go over section 9.1, which is center of gravity, center of mass, and centroid of a body. And we're also going to go over uh, section 9.2, which is composite bodies. So let's go ahead and get started with section 9.1, center of gravity, center of mass, and centroid of a body. So say we were to take a body, for example, a box, and slice it into an infinite number of particles. So an infinite number of smaller and smaller volumes to the point that they're individual particles. Each particle that consists of the total box would have its own uh, differential weight, a small increment of the weight. And the resultant force the result, uh, uh, of, the, of these total particles, if we were to sum these differential weights for every single particle, will end up with the value of the total weight of the body. So we'll end up with the total weight, right? So we can, um, so, so when we slice the body into these differential elements, each of these elements is going to have a position, an X, a Y, and a Z position, right? And when we sum all of these differential elements together, we'll find that when we sum them, that we'll have an average or a, 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 a central value x bar, y bar, and z bar for the location of the uh, or this the a location for the central weight or the center of gravity of the body. So now let's try to review a little bit uh, of chapter 4.8, which is equivalent force systems. So say we were to take this body and we were to focus just on it in term, or, or say we were to take another body, some arbitrary body which is a 2D problem, right? An X and Y problem. And it has some kind of arbitrary shape. And we were to slice it into differential elements, DW. And it has, and DW has a position X tilde and Y tilde, right? We know that when we sum all the differential elements, that we'll find weight at the center of gravity, and that weight will have the position X bar and Y bar. So let's apply the equations of equilibrium, and through those equations of equilibrium, it should help us determine the locations x bar and y bar for this problem. So if we were to apply the sum of the forces, then we would know that the total weight is going to be equal to the integral of the differential weights across the entire geometry, right? Which is, in essence, the sum of the differential weights. When we do the sum of the moments uh, uh, about the y-axis, so it will, it, I mean, uh, the sum of the moments about, yeah, the sum of the moments about the y-axis, so we would have to assume this is actually a 3D problem, not a 2D problem. So if we were actually looking at this problem here, and we did the sum of the moments about the y-axis, then we attempted to do that sum of the moments, we would find that the moment due to our, our resultant weight is going to be x bar or the position of the weight uh, along the, in the x direction times the total value of the weight. And in order to maintain equilibrium the, the integral of the, the x tilde position for each differential element uh, must be found and, and this, the sum of each of those differential um, mag, uh, 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 moments for each of the of the elements must be summed in order to equate to the moment due to the total weight. And we can do this again for the moment about the x and the moment about the z axis and we find the relationship that exists between the center of gravity positions x bar, y bar, z bar and the 
uh, individual positions or the 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 locations of the differential weights x tilde y tilde and z tilde so the the these things sum together now from this relationship we can find the equations for our center of gravity by simply rearranging those sum of the moments of equations where we find that x bar is equal to the integral of x tilde dw divided by the integral of dw where the integral of dw is equal to the weight right so this so the, the denominator is equal to the value of the weight um, so weight is equal to the integral of dw right the same thing for y bar and z bar y bar is equal to the integral of y tilde dw divided by the integral of dw and z bar is equal to the integral of z tilde dw divided by the integral of dw right and it's important to remember that x bar y bar and z bar are the coordinates of the center of gravity and x tilde y tilde and z tilde are the coordinates of each particle of the body and where each particle is the differential weight that we've sliced the body into the infinite number of small slices that we've uh, parceled the body into so now let's move on to how do we find the center of mass well the center of mass we focus on the value of the mass right we're, we're we have a body it has a mass uh, that is distributed throughout the body and we need to determine the center of mass of this arbitrary geometry well again we can slice the body into differential into into small particles that each have some some differential some uh, uh, some increment small increment of mass and we can find the position of each of those particles is x tilde and y tilde and z tilde and we know that our center of mass is going to have an x bar and a y bar and a z bar right and so very simply we can implement again the sum of the moments equations and we'll find that for the center of mass x bar is going to be equal to the integral of x tilde the differential mass uh, divided by the integral of dm and the same thing for y bar and for z bar where we're simply using our equations of equilibrium uh, in order to balance the resultant which is the total weight and in this case the the, the, the location the, of the total mo of the total mass with relation to the sum of each of the differential elements so let's go ahead and move on to the centroid of volume where the centroid is a geometric center of a body focusing on uh, the geometry the, 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 uh, whether it's the centroid of volume of area or line it's the geometric center of the body pertaining to the variable in this case our variable is volume we want to find the center of volume again we have some center of volume at some unknown position x bar and y bar and we can take that volume and break it up into sub elements differential elements that each have a position x tilde and y tilde and then using the sum of the moments equations we'll find that x bar is equal to the integral of x tilde uh, dv divided by the integral of dv and again remember uh, the integral of dv is equal to the volume okay and also up here the uh, the uh, the integral of dm is equal to this, the, the, the total value of the mass the total mass so the, the, the denominator should always be easy to find. It's a numerator which is going to be the difficult thing for you, to, for you to solve. So now let's go ahead and move on to the centroid of area. So say we have an area problem where we're just give us a 2D problem, you have some kind of arbitrary area and you want to find the center of that area on the 2D plane. Well again, if we want to find the center of area, our unknowns are X bar and Y bar which are the positions uh, the, the, the distances to tell us where the center of area is we can take the area and subdivide it into differential elements da which have a position x tilde and y tilde and we can apply our moment equations in order to determine what is the uh, x bar and y bar position where again uh, the area the denominator is equal to the differential the the sum or the integral of the, of all the differential areas okay um, and now let's go ahead and do the center of line. With the center of line, 
you have a problem where you're just given a simple line and you want to find where is the center of that line so what is this uh, the, the the in terms of the length of this body what is the central length along this line well what you have to do is again you have some central length some central position that has an X bar and a Y bar to it and you need to find those and you can take the line and subdivide it into differential lengths DL which have a position X tilde and Y tilde and again you can simply apply your sum of the moments equations and you'll find that X bar is equal to the integral of, of X tilde DL divided by the integral of DL where the denominator is equal to the well, the denominator is equal to the, the total length uh, along the along the member okay and so it's important when dealing with the uh, centroid of a line to note that the differential length DL uh, has a relationship to DX and DY uh, and we simply use the Pythagorean theorem and we find that DL is into, equal to the square root of DX squared plus DY squared. Uh, so probably one of the most difficult problems in terms of finding the centroid is going to be the line problem because you're going to have to, or it's, it's, it's often going to require you to replace the differential length DL with the Pythagorean form. And then you're going to need to rearrange your integral in order to state it in terms of the dx or the dy and solve in terms of dx or dy. So it can make it quite difficult, the, the centroid of line problems. Um, but the centroid of area and the, and the centroid of volume problems are actually going to be a bit, a bit easier. Um, so when we take this, uh, uh, when we want to simplify it and re replace the, the, uh, the dl with either a dx or a dy, uh, we can do the following. So if we're, if we're given the line and, we're, and it's described in terms of y being a function of x, then we want to use the following simplification, where dl is equal to the square root of 1 plus uh, dy dx squared, where since we're given the line as a function of x, we can simply plug it in to our d, uh, dy dx equation, solve this uh, derivative, and then have our integral in terms of just dx. Similarly, if we're given a line in terms of x as a function of fy, then we can use the following relationship where dy, I mean dl is equal to the square root of dx dy squared plus 1 times dy, where we can simply place the, the given x function into our derivative of dx dy, solve this derivative, and then we'll have our integral, we can plug all this back into our integral and have an integral in terms of dy. So it can be a bit tricky uh, in order to solve these problems, uh, the problems of a line. Uh, and it's going to be important for you to use these simplifications if you're given a problem of a line, which you should be given in your homework. So now let's go ahead and move on to composite bodies. So a composite body is a body that consists of a series of connected, simpler, uh, sh simply shaped bodies, uh, which may be rectangular, triangular, semi semicircular, etc. Uh, so such a body, if we're given a body that seems like a, a, a connection of, of simple shapes together, kind of like, you know, Legos uh, connected together, uh, uh, such a body can often be sectioned into composite parts. So say we're given this uh, weird beam here, this, this unusual shaped beam, and we're asked to find the center of gravity. Then what we could do, let me see what the, uh, okay, and we're asked to find the center of gravity. Then what we could do is we could actually take the body and separate it into three components. So one rectangle and two triangles. And then we can try to find the center of gravity of each of these uh, parts and then sum those center of gravities to find the, the, the true center of gravity of the, of the final uh, body. And so once we found the center of gravity for each of these simple, part, simple parts, we simply need to sum the values of their center of gravity together, where x bar is the coordinate of the center of gravity of the whole composite body, 
and x tilde, x tilde, y tilde, z tilde, are the coordinates of the center of gravity for each part of the composite body. And then uh, the sum of w is the sum of the weight of the composite body, or simply the, the total sum of all the parts put together. So we can uh, apply the same approach to problems of the center of mass, the centroid of volume, the center of area, as well as the center of line, where if we're given any of these conditions, and it's, uh, it seems like simple parts that can, be, uh, 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 com that can be identified, then we can finally find the center of, we can simply find the center of gravity, mass, area, volume, or line for each of those parts, and then sum them together using these simple, simple equations. And so just some examples of the application in real life. Um, the, uh, a barricade, uh, a concrete barricade, road barricade, right? You can s separate into a couple of shapes or a water tower that can be separated into a couple of shapes. And so the procedure for analysis, uh, simply put, we take our body, we try to sketch it and divide it into uh, separate parts, um, into uh, individual parts that have simple shapes. If the composite body has a hole uh, or a region where there's no material, then we can consider that hole as something that we can subtract, as it ha that ha we consider it to have a negative weight, so a weight that is subtracted from the full body. Um, then we establish uh, the coordinates for each of those points, what are the center of gravity for each of those parts, um, and establish them as x tilde, y tilde, or z tilde. And then we determine the x bar, y bar, and z bar total center of gravity applying the equations uh, that were shown. And of course uh, this is just an example if we have a body with a hole in it that we take that we could separate it into two parts and subtract the hole in order to get the center of gravity uh, of this of this part here. So the geometric properties of lines and area elements and the center of gravity and mass moment inertia of solids uh, can be found in the back of the book. So a lot of the classic shapes, rectangles, triangles, some uh, weird uh, half circles, a lot of the, the general parameters, the general um, uh, parameters needed to find the center of gravity, the information, positional information is given in the back of the book. So you can use that. You could put some of that information on your uh, cheat sheet for the exam to help you try to get through. So with that said, uh, do read chapter, sec chapter 9, sections 9.1 and 9.2. Uh, do some examples. Um, get yourself very comfortable with these these types of problems. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. The hardest uh, issue should be the line problems. Um, and if you have any questions, you can leave a comment uh, uh, on YouTube or you can send me an email. Thank you for your time.